Hi everyone. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Noctua NHP1. P1 for passive. Now I know you've already seen this all over the place. So uh, I am playing catch up. So what I have done is I've tested it in the normal way, completely passive. I've uh, also tested it with the fan that they send with it. So I've done a uh, semi-passive mode. But something that I personally was quite interested in was actually gaming with it in a system. Because if you think about it, a graphics card can kick a lot of heat into a case. So I've stressed it out in that way as well. And I think the results might surprise you. So first and foremost, we'll crack the box open to have a look at what we've got. Although I did get the low speed PWM fan, although low speed when they say it, it's 1200 RPM. And then with the adapter, it's 900 RPM. I would have thought like 600 RPM would have been like fairly low or maybe even lower than that. But anyway, opening the box, these are all the fittings. Oh, they sent you a little screwdriver. Well, not so little screwdriver. But you get a screwdriver. It obviously fits uh, Intel and AMD. Noctua have a really good reputation as well for when sockets and mounts change, offering you them for free if you need them. But yeah, separate AMD set, Intel set, it's all in there for you. And then, oh my God, this thing is enormous. Like, oh my giddy aunt, it is a behemoth. And straight away, the thing that I cannot stress enough is quite how thick the fins on this are. This is, it doesn't feel like a cooler I have ever had my hands on in the past. I would say these are like six, maybe eight times thicker than uh, coolers, fins that I've had in the past. It's a really good setup though. Let's have a look at it on a motherboard so that you can get a rough idea before we get on to test it. This isn't with it properly mounted. I'm just using this just to give you an idea. And it does overhang round the back with the heat sink and then all the way over the top with the heat sink as well. But you pretty much, with a dual slot, memory board you pretty much get free and clear access the only uh boards that you're going to have any difficulty with are the ones where you have uh, memory slots on both sides of the cpu but like that view again look at what i mean about how thick those fins are it's massive but now let's crack on with the testing so we've had a look at the boxes, so we know what's going on. Stick that back here out of the way. Now, I have tested the cooler uh, and I've used two CPUs. So what, and I've done it with two CPUs so that we can separate the pack. Because I was actually quite surprised that I saw the 11900K on the compatibility list. Because let's face it, it's a really hot processor. And I know a lot of you are gonna shout at the screen now about we're not gonna buy it, but. but we're just trying to put some heat into the cooler. So I've done an 11900K. I enabled XMP and I left everything alone. So it's literally just allowed to run, no overclock, no change of volts, like you would kind of build it and put it together at home. But then what I also did was chucked an 1100F in. So we've gone from uh, eight cores down to six cores, much lower power, uh, much lower clock speed, much lower heat into the system as well. Now what I have done is I've done a full passive mode. So literally as it is there, and uh, I've used a 3080, but what I did do, this is the 3080 uh, founders. What I've also done is I've put a normal 3080 in. Now I know you're gonna be shouting at the screen about having graphics cards, but anyway. So I put a normal 3080 in that uh, radiated downward. So I tested two different graphics cards with it just because of putting heat into the system. And I can say it's within a margin of error that doesn't really make a lot of difference because all the heat ends up in the case anyway. Now with the uh, fan itself it's a big old unit so uh, I couldn't get the door on with it this way 
so I had to put my fan on the top with it exhausting out the top. And thankfully, the brackets do allow for both. This is a big old case though. Uh, we're talking about the, it's the Fractal XL. Uh, and it's got a 140 millimeter rear fan. And normally if you've got a 140 rear fan, it means you can pretty much get any air cooler in. So it fits, but that fan's, it's a tough sell. I think uh, obviously with the passive, you want air to be able to move naturally and everything anyway. Uh, but they do have the mounts that you can put them underneath, on the side and on top. And one of the things I did do is one of the times I mistakenly fit the cooler the wrong way around. Uh, because uh, it overhangs this way on the board, or at least that's how they tell you to fit it. It overhangs this way, it overhangs the uh, VRM heat sinks and stuff like that. And when I did fit it, I grabbed some uh, footage for you so that you can see how it actually, the fins pretty much lined up with my memory stick. So I was pretty lucky. Now obviously with motherboards, those memory slots might not be in exactly the same position. Uh, but Sure, unless you've got massive um, dims and you have it that way around, you'll be fine. If you've got like a double slot board, then you're going to be run, running into issues with heat and stuff anyway. So you might have to run some short, shorter memory sticks. Uh, but like I said, I was really lucky with it that way around. But then I obviously I flipped it the other way around. You can see it sits much further over. It stays away from the memory sticks, which means you can have massive memory sticks in there if you want. And most of us nowadays, uh, if you've uh, updated your rig anytime soon are probably going to be on uh, the normal you know dual channel RAM configuration anyway so with the uh, fan uh, its top speed is 1200 rpm they call it low speed PWM fan I actually didn't think that was that low speed so I did it at 1200 rpm I also did a 600 rpm run have to give this fan its due it is incredibly quiet like when this was running it literally I was sat there listening to it like oh, I love Noctua fans like it's honestly they're like a work of art they hardly move, make any noise but by running a 600 rpm on it it kind of it makes it nigh on silent I would kind of if you were planning on a passive and you had the fan in there I'd almost wire it up as like an emergency kind of mode for once it hits a certain temperature. But anyway, so I did do both. But then I also did gaming. And I did gaming with both passive CPU and a fan CPU. With the fan CPU, I just run it at 1200 RPM. Um, so this is the big fat meaty done loads of testing graphs. Uh, and it did mean that I had to do quite a lot of runs to be able to do this. But the thing to kind of pick up on here is I'm personally really surprised how well this did with an 11900K uh, on passive. The fan did make a lot of difference, a lot of difference. Um, but the real stress point comes when you start gaming on it because I would normally, it's a CPU cooler, I would genuinely normally just do CPU benchmarks on it because I want to stress the CPU out. But where this doesn't have any uh, fans or air blowing over it or anything like that, the moment this starts cranking out some heat, this soaks it up. And it, it genuinely does soak it up. After, I use Unigen basically because I cheat and I put it on 1080p mode so the frames are high and the stress on the graphics card is high uh, with all the anti-aliasing on uh, and it loops. So I literally set a timer half an hour. And these were the times after at half an hour. And literally you can see, because I got some B-roll before I ripped the cable out the back of the rig when I laid it down, but you can see when I was getting back to the desktop after 30 minutes, some of the cores were at 100 degrees. Now that was obviously the passive mode. And you can see on the 11900K, 97 degree, I think I had three cores on 100. Uh, the, don't count the package temp and then the other ones by the time you've added them together and divided it so that you get the mean uh, that's where you get your 97 degrees from so passive with a big graphics card is a big ask and for an 11900k I'd say it's too much of an ask 11400 I didn't actually think that was that bad um, below 90 degrees but again smash the fan on it goes down to 65 so it's actually quite weird because it's designed to be passive, but when you actually put a fan on it, it works really well. Like, I was pleasantly surprised. Now, the other thing that I would say 
is I did run the case completely passive. All the other fans in the rig were completely turned off because, you know, we wanted that. So the other side of it is the graphics card was getting mega hot because it was getting no airflow. Now, I personally think that if you wanted to build a silent rig, you'd probably want a silent graphics card as well. So this necessarily isn't like going to work. So either that or I think I'd probably end up with in my eyes, maybe one with a little water cooling loop or an AIO or something on it that you could put at the top. So then the heat from the graphics card was getting dumped out the top as well. I think that's probably gonna be the way that you could get the quietest rig, because that's the whole point with this. Um, oh, but a gaming rig with this kind of setup, I think you're probably gonna end up doing it for uh, aesthetics over the, the passive side of it because the cooler does look really nice. One of the things it does do as well is when it does get hot, you'll actually hear it kind of start to ping as the metal and everything's kind of expanding and contracting. So if you've ever been out for a drive in your car and you've got home and it's really hot and you walk away from it and you hear a ting, ting, ting and it's everything kind of cooling down. When you turn this off, it does that. It's quite a strange thing to witness when you're it's like you've been playing games and suddenly your rig's doing like a cool down ping. It's, it's very, very strange. But, so the numbers are all there and I, I'm genuinely, genuinely surprised how well it coped with the i9. I personally think it's better with something like an i5, something a little bit more mid-range, because with something a little bit more mid-range, you have the possibility of going passive if you want. I would personally advise for though anyone other than the most extreme kind of like confident users that fan unless you you're doing it for pure aesthetics i think the fan set up and have a spin up threshold really really high so if it ever does get really really warm um then that's the sort of <clears throat> that'd be the time i'd have it kick in i also didn't run it with the roof running the roof on put the temperatures up by around eight degrees so it being able to uh, literally just ventilate itself out the roof is kind of a critical thing um, I did was very unfair as well and I did run it with the door on uh, running it with the door off makes a massive amount of difference because the air can get in there so much better I actually know of some cases that are coming out later on in the month that would probably be ideal for this because they're quite open and lots of vents and stuff like that. So I did give it quite a hard time today. Now, uh, I actually really like it, but it's one of those ones where you just have to go careful at home. I think a lot of you are probably gonna want that fan, unless you're doing some, um, I think Davido Levido, uh, I just bloody Dave, he's just got this um, ITX frame case thing. Now this would look amazing on that because the case is completely exposed which means you haven't got any of the worries and all of that sort of thing. And because it's passive, it would work a considerable amount better. Um, so it's, I think it's gonna be the sort of thing where you're gonna see someone that is trying to create an aesthetic with it. And I think you'll see it in a lot more places than you thought. I honestly wasn't prepared for it to perform this well. Now I know it's not brilliant, it's not gonna win any awards, it's not like NHD 16 levels of cooling, but considering a lot of those results are run with like a single fan or no fan, I actually think it's done incredibly well, incredibly well. Adding in fans throughout the case will make it better and like no end. Uh, adding airflow in even at low RPMs will make a massive difference. Having it completely exposed and open again, it won't perform as well as fans, but it will do very, very well. So it's just gonna be one that you're gonna need to go careful when you're buying it. Um, and consider the graphics card as well, because if you're going mega gaming rig with that in, you are just gonna need to make a few concessions about some slight airflow or something like that. So I know this has been a lot of chatting, but it's been more of, uh, I wanted to try and educate you through my experience of this, and I'm pleasantly surprised, and it's actually really nice to test some Noctua again. But, for now at least, this has been the tiniest one with another video for you all out. Ding! Love you, sis.